Good afternoon, everybody. This is the Vermont State Senate Committee on Institutions. Today is April the 8th, 2021. The um, conversation is live on YouTube, and I'm going to first start off by introducing myself, Joe Benning, the Chair of Institutions. I represent the Caledonia County District. We have with us today four committee members, Senator Ingalls from Essex Orleans, Senator McCormick from Windsor, Senator Mazza from Grand Isle. We are awaiting for uh, one of our members, Senator Parent from Franklin County, who I hope will be joining us shortly. We are continuing a conversation that we began yesterday on the proposal to sink the good ship Adirondack in Lake Champlain. Um, we have had a little bit of conversation about the subject of the public trust doctrine. Our first witness will be talking about that doctrine to educate the committee. And for all of the witnesses' uh, sake, there's a couple of ground rules that I try to relate at the beginning of every committee meeting. We are on YouTube. There may be people out there who have never experienced a committee meeting before. They may be totally unfamiliar with the subject area that you are now talking about. So if I hear words that might otherwise seem normal to us committee members because we've heard the terms or they're totally unfamiliar to us one way or the other, I'll probably interrupt and say, what does that mean? Can you explain it for the purposes of our audience? We also have three members who have not been on the committee previously with one exception. One of those three was on the committee a long time ago. We also have a brand new legislator. So we have people who are learning this system from scratch. With that said, um, as each of you introduces yourself to testify, it would be most appreciated if you would start off with a very basic biographical description of who you are and how you fit into the subject that we are about to talk about. We have um, as our first witness, Michael O'Grady from Ledge Council, who I've asked to come and share with us um, and hopefully get some questions about the public trust doctrine and how that fits into our responsibilities as an institution's committee. Michael, good afternoon, welcome. Good afternoon, Senator. Uh, as you just stated, I'm Michael O'Grady from the Office of Legislative Council. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the public trust doctrine and then some concerns I have about the proposal um, and uh, kind of a response to some of the statements that I made that were made yesterday uh, in your committee hearing. I, I watched I just watched the YouTube and I'd like to respond to some of the things that were said. I've learned um, that that's a great thing for uh, insomnia if you had a problem sleeping at night. I, I, I wasn't able to watch the whole thing. I, I only had to fast forward through some of it. Uh, so the public trust doctrine, um, it's an ancient doctrine. It's, it's derived from Roman law and then evolved through um, uh, British law, King's law. Uh, but in the United States, it's a, it's a common law doctrine provides it's the state as a trustee holds navigable waters and submerged lands beneath them and trust for the benefit of the people. The purpose of the doctrine is to preserve for the public uh, access to navigable waters for navigation, commerce, and fishing free from obstruction by private parties. And the Vermont Supreme Court has recognized the public trust doctrine and the authority of the state to supervise and control navigable waters and the lands lying underneath them. Um, and the core of, the, of the, the doctrine is the state's authority as the sovereign to exercise supervision and control over the navigable waters of the state. And the sovereign in this case is you, the General Assembly. Um, you are, are where the, the, the public trust authority um, basically best. It's, it's your role uh, to exercise the, the supervision and care over the public trust doctrine. With that said, however, you can delegate that authority to um, another entity. For example, you delegated to the city of Burlington management of the submerged lands, the public trust lands along Lake Champlain for them to manage those lands for public use. You have delegated the issue of encroachment on waters 
to the Department of Environmental Conservation under Title 29. And DEC specifically is granted the public trust authority over encroachments for lakes and ponds. In Title 29, BSA Section 401, there's a statement that the lakes and ponds of the state are public trust waters. And there's a statement that DEC is the entity that will implement that public trust according to the Chapter 29 VSA Chapter 11. Yesterday, one of your witnesses said that there should be a policy for how the ferry or any other encroachment is going to be implemented. There is a policy. It's 29 VSA Chapter 11. It requires the state to determine that the proposed activity is in the public good. And there are criteria for how the state is to determine whether or not it is in the public good. So if you have delegated your public trust authority for an encroachment to DEC, and I will now read to you what an encroachment is. Oh, I just lost my page, hold on a second. But generally, it includes, um, I'll just hold on. It's to place or cause to be placed any material or structure in any lakes and ponds that are public waters or to alter or cause to be altered the lands underlying any waters or to place or to place or cause to be placed any bridge, dock, boathouse, cable, pipeline or similar structure beyond the shoreline as established by the mean water level. What is being proposed here is the placing of a structure in a lake or a pond. You will say, well, is a boat a structure? Was an artificial reef a structure? Under the Federal Rivers and Harbors Act rules, an artificial reef created from a boat is a structure. Um, so you, you're, you've already delegated this authority to an agency they already received the permit application for it. They've already issued the permit, which raises something called the vested rights doctrine in Vermont. The vested rights doctrine in Vermont follows the minority rule. And that means that a person that applies for uh, authorization to do someone, the laws vest at the time that they apply, they have an administratively complete application not when the permit or the authorization is issued. So the law that changes between when the application is submitted and when the permit is issued, it doesn't matter. Their, law, their rights vested at the time that they got an application in. I believe the State Historic Preservation Division was the applicant and they applied in 2020. The law that applies to this application is the 2020 law. There's a very good legal argument that you can't change that. Um, now, someone will say the vested rights doctrine in Vermont has only been applied to land use cases, and that's not true. Recently, 2019, it was applied to a stormwater case, which is a water quality case. So now you're back at a water quality issue. So, Public trust, yes, you are as a sovereign have the, the responsibility to manage lakes and ponds for the good of the public, including the lands underneath those lakes and ponds. But you can delegate that authority. You've delegated it to DEC. You gave them criteria to use to implement and review any encroachment on the water. Sinking of a ship is an encroachment. Historic preservation has already applied. You know, the vested rights doctrine, the law that should apply to that application is the law that existed in 2020. So, and I don't think what's in the House passed version of the Capitol bill really controls because it's under a section that relates to ACCD and it says ACCD the agency, it actually says the agency, shall not authorize the reefing of the Adirondack. 
Well, ACCD does not authorize encroachments. A&R authorizes encroachments. So there's a very real reading of that language that it doesn't have any application. Um, in addition, one of the witnesses yesterday said, oh, this is a water quality issue. It's my understanding that A&R takes the position that if a boat is in Lake Champlain and it doesn't have any fluids in it, there's no risk of an ongoing discharge. If there's no risk of an ongoing discharge, it doesn't need a discharge permit. And Senator Mazza, you re may remember that sailboat that was sunk up there around your town that sat there for, for months. And a and said, hey, it doesn't have any liquids in it. It's not an ongoing discharge. It doesn't need to have a permit. So that's a question I have. If this ferry is stripped of all liquids, all fluids, it's not going to have an ongoing discharge. Is it even a water quality issue? Are you back to it's just an encroachment issue? Um, and I still think the Rivers and Harbors Act applies because, as I said earlier, I do think it's an artificial, it's a structure under the Rivers and Harbors Act. Uh, Lake Champlain is a Rivers and Harbors Act federal water. Um, so it may need a, a permit authorization from the U.S. Corps of Engineers um, to make sure it's not an obstruction to navigation. So that, that's where I kind of come down on this. I, I don't, I just was informed of this yesterday. I did my best to come up to come up to, to knowledge on this. Um, and I just look at this and I, I see a bunch of issues. When you say looking at this, you're talking about the statement in the Capitol bill. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Michael, are you the staff attorney for natural resources and energy? Yes. and and. One of the staff attorneys, Ellen Tchaikowski, is also one, but I do water. Okay. And your opinion right now is that this is not a water quality issue. It's an encroachment issue. I, I, I think that that's a &R's policy for boats that are, that are sunk in Lake Champlain. If it does not have fluid on it that poses a risk of ongoing discharge, then it's not it's not regulated under 10 BSA chapter 47, which is the water quality chapter. It's regulated under 29 BSA chapter 11, which is the encroachment chapter. Um, before we get any further, could you just red flag for yourself? I would like a very brief um, opinion on the subject you've just talked about, because I have a feeling there's going to be some discussion between our committee and the house committee and I wanna make sure I have something in hand when I get there. It doesn't have to be very long, but um, you've drawn a couple of legal conclusions and I wanna make sure I'm, I'm not talking out of thin air. Sure, I, I, it won't take me long to do that. Okay, um, committee questions, Senator Maz. I go back to my original statement I've made the last three or four days is how, can we legislate something not be done if we have no jurisdiction and they've gone through the process of getting the permits? What authority do we have to say we, you can't do something if you've applied and received all the permits necessary? And I use the example of someone wants to put an apartment house up, they get all the permits, the sewer, the everything, and then the legislature with no money involved says to them, no, you can't do it. And that scares me of that precedent that we're setting, uh, let alone whether it's a, a boat or whatever is in the lake. If they have met all the criteria for this, and yet what jurisdiction do we have as a legislator to say it's it's null and void, it's no good. Uh, that, that's, I go back to that same issue. I don't, I don't know what I'm missing here. I don't think you are missing anything. I think your, your, your example of the 
the person seeking those building permits. That's Vermont Supreme Court has said, we're not going to allow the law to change your, your rights best in the law as they existed when you apply. Right. So the, the law, if the law changes, it doesn't affect you. It's when you apply. In addition, you raise the issue of separation of powers. You've delegated this program. The program implemented the program according to the criteria and statute, I assume. And they've issued a permit. Now you're going to say that that permit can't be issued. That's like telling the commissioner of fish and wildlife that he can't give Bob a, a hunting license to hunt deer because the fish and wildlife for public trust resources, Bob can go and get a hunting license if he's not a felon, et cetera. And, and there, there's, you're, you're in the same situation. You're, you're, you're potentially overstepping the legislative role and trying to execute the law instead of establish the law. You know, I, I agree with Senator Maz. I mean, it's, it, I mean, I, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems like ex post facto, you know, and the fact that, you know, we're making it after the fact that we can change this law going forward after this one, but you know, I, I've seen projects like a Walmart in St. Albans take 25 years to get built. I'd hate to see the legislature get involved <laughs> hey, in delay things no. like that more. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. this reminds me, you know, whether you like the rule or not, That's right. these are the rules they had to play by when they started this process, um, we shouldn't be interfering. So what flagged this for me initially was seeing language in the Capitol bill and then hearing from the House that this was a decision based on what I'm hearing clearly were water quality issues um, and the potential for water quality issues. And I've been very uncomfortable with a committee on institutions making a call on water quality issues Clearly, that's not in our jurisdiction. I, I do have an understanding from you, Michael, that encroachment on the lake, <clears throat> since the lake bed is part of the state uh, lands, that this committee would have uh, say in that conversation. But as I also understand it, the Army Corps of Engineers have issued a permit. So navigation is not an issue. The Department of Environment Mental Conservation issued a permit. So at least to them, the environment was not an issue. Um, and I'm, I'm really scratching my head. This in, in scope is probably a very small thing in comparison to the capital budget, but it is a very large leap for mankind as far as I can see about committees crossing jurisdictions. Um, and I, I guess I keep scratching my head trying to figure out how did that happen? And it may literally be one of the only things we're in disagreement with the House on with the Capitol bill. So it could be uh, some hot and heavy conversation on, a, on what amounts to nothing in the Capitol budget because these folks are not asking for any money from us. Um, they may have some maintenance situations down the road, but Right now, there's no request for money. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. I'm not a lawyer either, but I do play one on TV. It just seems like we've crossed a line that, that should not have been crossed and it establishes a precedent. I, I cannot see the Natural Resources Committee deciding um, that a transportation issue like where um, a bridge needs to be fixed, suddenly making the claim that a bridge should not be fixed uh, because that, that clearly is not within their jurisdiction unless there's some environmental impact. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm willing to wait out and hear from the rest of the witnesses. Anybody else have any questions for Michael? Thank you, Michael. That was a good overview. Appreciate it. 
Yeah, very succinct and, and very clear. Um, but I would appreciate your giving me an opinion. And if uh, you would please send a copy of that to Senator Bray and to Alice Emmons. Sure. Just let just let them know that I asked that uh, you forward it to them. 